So, thanks so much for coming onto the channel. Um, I had a quick question. Are you still with the Blaze? Of course. No, no, not not anymore. Okay. Yeah, I saw that you were on Fox News, the Blaze. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was I was more of a, I was a producer at Fox, and then at the Blaze, uh, I did I did a show there. So. Okay. Yeah, I remember I remember your Blaze show more than I I don't think I ever was aware yeah. of you with Fox News. But all right, yeah. let's just jump right into this. Uh, this whole uh, debate basically started because I said that diversity benefits the military and you called me a retard for having that take. So do you want to explain why I'm a retard for that take? Yeah, because it's a retarded take. Okay. In well, what way does diversity benefit the strength of the military? And first of all, in what way does diversity really affect the military? If anything, it actually hurts the military as diversity generally does to any group. And I guess I'll start by asking you this question. What scenario can you think of where diversity is actually something that's beneficial? Like even in a marriage, for instance, what kind of marriage do you know where someone's like, we actually have nothing in common. We're come from, from completely different walks of life. We don't really get along. But you know what? It actually strengthens our marriage. Because that you're, only you're mixing like up Disney diversity movies. right now with nothing in common. So when I'm saying diversity, I'm referring to people of all different uh, identities, people of different racial groups. And when they all come together to form a common gr uh, goal, there is no issue there whatsoever. So I think that the first no, thing, there is no, there's not not there in the is. military. And Hold on, time let's time again. let's jump. I'm going to try to explain to you and walk you through how uh, diversity benefits the military. So I think we can start off with a little bit of common ground here. What do you think? Do you think that, or I guess I should just ask if you agree? Do you agree that with foreign threats and whatnot, innovation is crucial for the success of our military? Not if the innovation doesn't actually defeat them. Okay. Well. I mean, obviously, what, what, yeah, what we, want, we want effective innovation. innovation. Well, innovation in the, in the innovation coming from strategies, innovation on the technology that we use, innovation gives us an upper edge against other militaries as well. So I think that we can both agree that innovation is pretty important for the success of our military because it gives us an advantage over other militaries. Yes, and I assume you're getting to the fact that more diversity leads to more innovation, which yes. just isn't true. And the other could thing you that wait, 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 hold on. Let's to... stay on one topic at a time, please. How is that not true? I, it, it might, it might not. It really, the, the, the innovation factor really has little to do with the, the, the racial makeup or the gender makeup or the sexual identity yeah, this of the is, military. I think this is where the confusion comes from is this is just not true. So there are various different studies that have all uh, looked at different businesses and firms and whatnot, and they found that diversity absolutely did benefit it. So for example, there was a study done um, uh, they, they surveyed executives at 177 national banks in the U.S., and they put together a database. And for innovative-focused banks, increases in racial diversity were clearly related to enhanced financial performance. There was another study where they had um, uh, they studied the firm's innovation intensity, and they found that companies that prioritized innovation saw greater financial gains when women were part of the top leadership ranks. Oh, gee, okay, all of that's fine and dandy. But we're not talking about businesses in Silicon Valley. We're talking about the military. Right. And when it comes to the military, there's only so much innovation that's necessary. No, and to be is, honest, this is unfortunately much know a... how to defeat our enemies. If no, 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 no. We don't. Them, this is a huge. Gone. I think you're. And you're there's a. Buddy, I think you're misunderstanding a lot of, other a lot of stuff no, right now. There's a lot of other things that are going wrong with the military. And when you have things that are more important in the military, like cohesiveness, unity, a yep. bond, all of that is more in a, it, that is more important than this so-called innovation. Like, wh this what, is what not kind true. Of We've literally been innovating like, since day one. That's one of the greatest assets of the military. There's even an army innovation strategy. There's literally, oh, excuse me, there's an army ideas for innovation program so that people can come up with new ideas to keep the U.S. military with its edge. So and the so reason these studies diversity, you're, you, you, you would you would contend that the military, that the U.S. military has gotten better, stronger, more effective, more forceful, more powerful 
in the last 50 years because of all of this diversity and apparently the innovation that comes with it. Where is the Why are you saying apparently innovation? I just cited you two different studies that showed that with diversity okay, I, I don't really comes greater care about need. The studies. Like, I, I know don't, you don't, don't really because you don't care about, about the facts of this matter, but I literally have just no, no, cited no, no, you no, no, two no. different studies no, no, that show no. that diversity leads to more innovation. And that's because you have more people to draw ideas from. You have a more inclusive team. You have more ideas that can come together. And that's what creates more innovation. There are literally- We haven't won a war since the Immigration Act. We haven't defeated an enemy since that. Shouldn't that tell you something? I, I know you're with diversity. Winning a war? Yeah. What does that the, have to do with the, diversity? Are you talking about like what the war in Iraq? Yeah, well, every war since World War II, if you're talking about since the 60s, we haven't won anything. Really? Then so how come since, it's been since the since, 1800s, since armies with high rates of inequality have literally done poorly? So with high rates of inequality, high yeah, rates that's of inequality, true. yes. And they found that, that armies I mean, that had high rates of inequality increased the odds by 50 percent that an army will suffer more casualties. Wait, so, wait, wait. So you're saying diversity is a benefit, but but armies with inequality and obviously inequality comes with diversity. Those are just part and parcel. No, it they've doesn't. done poor. No, it doesn't. Yeah, 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 it does. No, when you are more accepting, you actually benefit again, innovation yeah, you and you benefit the cohesion on. You can't force acceptance on people. So, yeah, there 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 is a. Uh, there's a guy named Lyle. I'm, I, he's, a, I think, an associate professor at Dartmouth, and he has this book out that talks about how diversity actually benefits and, and, and makes the army stronger. And it's really interesting because he talks about how diversity is so wonderful in the military, provides an edge, innovation. You cut out. He says he's going to prove, and then when all of it, sorry, can you hear me? Yes. So he says he's going to prove, he's going to prove how wonderful the military is and how uh, amazing it is with diversity. And then when it comes when it comes out that all of the armies sc score really low on the scale that he provides, he's kind of like, well, you know, it's not enough for the army to be diverse because, uh, you know, a country also has to be able to extend equal and full citizenship and equality and inclusion, which yeah. is an impossibility. It's not an impossibility uh, at all. It's already been done in many different ways. And didn't you just talk about the cohesion of the military? Yeah, you can't have cohesion with a bunch of diverse people with nothing in common. This is that completely is untrue. And in fact, yeah. it's actually your talking point right now that is hurting the cohesion far more than including ethnic uh, minorities or people of different sexual orientations in the military. And wait, again, wait, wait, I would wait, like wait. to cite a study to you that was done in 2008 on the British military, and they found that when there's this obsession with cohesion among racial uh, groups or sexual orientation, this creates a binary where people view themselves as effective or ineffective based solely on their identity. And this harms the goal of cohesion within the military. And it also uh, destabilizes the whole entire army. This has been demonstrated in a peer-reviewed study, if you'd like me to send it to you. But it sounds Again, like right you're now you're just... Yourself. How am I contradicting myself, please? Because you're insisting that this diversity is great in the military, but then adding the caveat that they have to force this idea of cohesion on top of them and they have to be hyper obsessed with cohesion. No, Why should the military be that? hyper obsessed? You just said that. I was you saying that, that your obsession with saying obsessed? that it's no, I'm saying that your obsession with cohesion based on sexual orientation or race or, or, or whatnot or hyper, or does more harm. Whatever, but basically what you're arguing is that they have to put an additional focus on making sure that the troops focus on inclusivity and cohesiveness or cohesion. Is that not right? Well, there are many different ways that you can go about this. So there are certain initiatives that can be pl uh, put in place. But also, if we want to talk about it, just simply having exposure to other groups of people makes it so that you're more accepting and benefits cohesion. So they did a study okay, in that, Australia, that's, that's for example. Well, well, no, no, no. This, this is a direct response to what you just said. So they did a study in Australia where they found that ethnic diversity is related to positive intergroup contact. And it had benefits within social cohesion because it reduced the perceived threat. So when you isolate people and you have nothing but straight white men, for example, in the military, you make it so that they're more likely to be unaccepting of other people. Whereas if they are simply raised in an environment where diversity is a natural component of life, they're less likely to be discriminatory. What is, is this, this study is out of Australia. When, when is the last time Australia did anything of note or no, won it was a war? It, it was, they used a sample of 1,073rd generation Australians, and they used a structural equation modeling. So this isn't even military? 
Well, it we doesn't have societal. to. Be. It doesn't have to be the military. Okay. Well, then it, they don't have studies entirely for every single aspect of the military. But the studies that I keep uh, bringing up, both with Silicon Valley and uh, the social cohesion point, is that we can witness how social cohesion is positively influenced by racial diversity, and we can witness how innovation benefits from diversity. This doesn't. Oh my God. Enough, enough with the studies. But if you if you want to talk about studies, I'm sure you know uh, Putnam. And he's the guy who did like the largest ever, the largest ever study on civic engagement in America. He found that literally by basically every measure, diversity hurts a community. No, this was actually because the community was racist. So it had uh, it had issues there because people were racist. But when you control for actual trust factors, then that completely vanishes. There are way better and newer studies that have shown once again that when you are exposed to diversity, even if you're around diversity, you become less racist. So you can somehow defeat your enemies? No, no, you become less racist. We're talking about cohesion here. That was based on the study you just cited. So again, yeah. I and said that diversity said, yeah, benefits the military, it, and now I'm trying to walk you through both how diversity benefits innovation, which is crucial for the military, my dude. This has been like a massive part of the military since day one of the military, and diversity benefits cohesion because now you have a broader group of people with all kinds of different skills and put together in one unit, they work well together, especially when the focus is on viewing each other as a fellow soldier rather than viewing each other solely on the basis of identity. And again, I'm gonna keep going back to the fact that you, you are hurting cohesion by obsessing over cohesion on the basis of identities. You're doing that right now. Yeah, You're what? weakening our military. Because there's no evidence that you can just shove people together in one military. And OK, there's you said a, shove um, people together. That it obviously that, has to do, be done properly and it has to be done with certain initiatives and care. Where, where, where is the example? Because every time I ask you for an example of where this has worked, then you jump to civilian life. Right. You, you jump out of the military and you say, well, there's obviously not a study that shows that this works in the military, but let's go to civilian life. Well, that's, that's not exactly how it works. It's not. No, no, no. It is because we're talking about a group trying to achieve a common goal. So you, the yeah, reason that, that, that diversity in provokes innovation specific. and the reason that diversity benefits social cohesion are just as applicable to the military. Because once again, you are viewing people as the status of um, a fellow soldier rather than viewing them as uh, uh, on the basis of their identity. And there is How actually a study. So how many soldiers have you talked to? Uh, I'll just, you, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've poured over all these studies. How many soldiers have you talked to who said, you know, hey, I really love the fact that, like, I have transgenders in my military and women. And I love being able to not feel comfortable in my own barracks, in my own settings, or even know that my fellow soldiers are going to be combat ready because of the fact that they're pumped up with hormones. Or so the do fact you realize that, that, that right now like what I, you're doing I, is appealing to feelings of other people and I'm trying to give you facts? I'm literally I'm, trying I'm to cite you. data and information oh, to you. Okay. And you were saying, I don't care right, about the ben, studies. Sure. I just want to know what the soldiers are feeling. There have been studies already done with soldiers. Yeah, for example, they're, they're soldiers that have, hold on, I'm on. answering your question right now. There have already been studies, for example, with soldiers who are aware that other soldiers are gay. And guess what? It didn't affect social cohesion. It didn't affect cohesion of the units. We can see this uh, historically. We can see this in foreign precedent. And we can see this in the current U.S. military. Second of all, as I was trying to it say a second, did. as I was trying to say a minute ago, minorities fare just as well in the military when the military emphasizes the end goal of the mission rather than getting hung up on unique individual traits. And this is, again, a peer reviewed study that found for soldiers who have internalized this culture, it could be easier to see past individual differences such as gender and race and identify others in the unit as fellow soldiers primarily. And what I'm trying to tell you, buddy is that you can give me every peer-reviewed study under the sun and it doesn't actually show itself in how the military actually feels. And just as an example, the fact that in order to get this kind of utopia that you're, that you're kind of envisioning in the military, you have Lloyd Austin, he had to put the military on hold. They, they literally weren't allowed to do anything while they figure out how to, how to take care of this racism problem that's rampant in the military. And of course, racism problem just means people posting memes on the internet. But when you I don't have to know put if the military on means, hold, but again, when you, you have to put the going, military like, it's on very hold, telling that you, say you can't, don't no, care. Hold, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'll, let me finish the sentence here. All right, buddy. When you have to put the military on hold and say you can't do anything you're supposed to be doing because we want to indoctrinate you guys and make you guys feel like you're accepting and everything. 
that shows that whatever like diversity goal you're trying to reach doesn't actually benefit or help our military be as effective as it can. This is just a blatant when, when the lie. Military, and also, if we were to establish, hold on, if we were to extend your, hold on, no, you hold on. If we were to extend your logic, they, then we should never have gotten rid of Jim Crow laws because there were people that were racist and they wanted black the people to be to civilian. No, no, no I'm not jumping different. around. I'm extending your logic, the logical follow through of what you just said, which is we can't implement diversity, even though it's been shown to benefit innovation, which is crucial to us actually winning wars and succeeding because some people are racist. And I'm saying the extension of that logic is simply that, well, there were people racist in the United States. Maybe we shouldn't got rid of Jim Crow. You could make this right. exact you said same you're not argument. You're to jump to, right civilian, to, to civilian life. And you're going to get caught in the weeds here. And we're going to go in circles getting caught in those weeds. These the are fact weeds. Of the this is, is me establishing you, you how bad to, your logic is. If you, if you have to put the military on hold and say you can't carry out your functions because we want to make sure that we're accepting and diverse and all of that, then it kind of shows you that the military can't really be effective while also trying to achieve this goal of diversity and inclusivity. This is completely untrue first of all the entire military it is true first they of all the, the entire they, am i allowed to respond now the, the entire board. military was not put on hold P the, but looking in and investigating an issue is very important i mean what do you suppose we do do you think that we should kick out all gay people from the military yes we don't have to kick them out they were not supposed to be in there in the first place great so i'm really glad you said that because now again your policies are what harm the military so for example Back in uh, the 1990s and to through 2010, U.S. armed forces lost between $290 million and $500 million implementing the don't ask, don't tell policy. Because now they had to start sniffing around and uh, doing investigations to find out who was gay and then discharging them after going through costly training. This, again, hurts the military. I don't know why you keep saying they put the entire military on hold. The military obviously is going to have to investigate issues. There's an issue with rampant sexual assault in the military with male on male sexual assault during hazing, for example. Hey, and what, what do you know? That wouldn't be an issue if you didn't have homosexuals. No, in the wait, wait, wait. Hazing, two men who are straight are getting, or men who are straight are sexually assaulted by other straight men in. Uh, hazing rituals, for example. This is a massive issue within the military. So should they just not look into that, I guess, because they have to put the military on hold? These are literally like two-dimensional talking points, my dude. Dude, they can, look, they can look into hazing, but that's not the same thing as sexual assault, and it's also not the same thing it's as sexual assault in year. the form of hazing. I'm being very specific here. Yeah, it, it, so it's, that's, it's different from sexual assault. Uh, I would need a specific what? example of exactly what, what kind of sexual assault you're talking about. Yeah, so an example was somebody having their genitals fondled and a finger stuck up their asshole. So do yeah, you think, that's, it, that's, is that sexual assault in no, your mind? That, 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 that's military like, misconduct. So that's not sexual assault in your mind? It's, I would consider that military mis I would consider that misconduct. I would consider <laughs> Hold that on, wait. So if somebody goes against your will and gropes your genitals and sticks a finger up your ass, you're telling me that that's just military misconduct? Why are you so afraid to call that sexual assault? I, I would probably classify it as sexual assault, but I'm really not sure of the point that you're getting at. You're saying because we have straight people in the military with homosexual assault problems, that what? Like, I, I don't understand what your actual final point is. I'm trying to establish the final point, which is you said because some people might be racist, now they have to put the military on hold to investigate no, they accusations did. They, it's not of racism. Like a they did. They did. I didn't hear and, about uh, you know, I didn't hear about this instance, but uh, it wasn't a giant news story when when this one instance of, of sexual assault happened in the military, where it's the just whole one issue. Uh, trying to trying to weed out racism and Lloyd Austin having to to halt the military. That that was a big story and it was a big scandal. Well, that's because racism further benefits or further negatively affects the overall morale. So like, OK, but even even say that racism is is an issue in the military. People are racist. That should not be something that the military itself. And this is why you have to you can't make the mistake of extending it to civilian life. And then all of a sudden saying, OK, well, this is Jim Crow, because even say you do have racist people in the military. It doesn't matter. That shouldn't actually have to affect the way the military operates. The military's concern is not to sit there and make sure sure that they don't have any racist among their ranks. The mm -hmm. military's primary purpose is not to sit there and make sure that everyone is accepting and equal and feels included. No, the yes, purpose you of the do. military is this to is... win wars 
had to defeat the First, enemy. Okay, and holy shit. I, force I, it's funny you ask me if world. I've ever been in the military when only 10% of the military ever even sees combat, first of all. Second of all, racism absolutely does negatively affect uh, the units because it should morale, not be the concern. It should not be the social why? experiment. Do we not, want, to, do we not want our military to be as strong as possible? Of course we do, and therefore so you when do people not need to are focus racist, on all these social issues that, so, that, they're, that they're fussing over in Berkeley. So when people are racist, this harms morale. Morale is higher, for example, when people feel recognized and respected at their work, at Who their are job. you asking? I'm asking you. No, meaning like who, 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 who are, who's going around saying like, what about morale? Do you feel accepted and recognized? There have been various different studies. There's a RAND study I can send you if you'd like. But it's just a fact of the matter that morale is higher when people feel respected at work, at their job. People are able to do their job more effectively if they feel that they can trust their colleagues and if they're not being discriminated against <laughs> by their job. This is like two brain cells yeah, right now. Yeah, no, but you, what I'm saying is you can't just all of a sudden say, okay, now be accepting and magically everyone is going to get along. So when again, when you cite, cite these studies, and I think you're actually – Citing the Lyle study, when you cite these studies, it's like, okay, yeah, in this ideal world where everyone is, where there is maximum diversity, but also maximum equality, that doesn't actually exist. So why don't we and just kick out the racists? That, and in order to make that exist, you have to do these big, the, the, these big overhauls of the military and then start training them no. with, with e e Ibram X. Kendi or whatever his name no, is and all of that. No, this is a kind of massive stuff. straw man yeah. right now. And this is just untrue. There are certainly no, initiatives that can be taken. Doing in the military. Hey, there's, there are certainly initiatives that can be taken to make a more inclusive environment. But I think you're missing the fact that having a more inclusive environment further benefits the morale and cohesion of the military, which is critical for our military. It's so if you're not, that worried about this, why don't we kick out racists? The the, because when they try to do that, and that's been my point, when they try to do that what happens they literally have to bring everything to a standstill and it and, and conduct these massive investigations which never end up bearing any fruit but and this is the same thing you just advocated for to focus on this is the same thing you just advocated no, for with not. outing gay people you said that gay people no, should no. be kicked out and so i'm telling you we've I already didn't, I, didn't say, I didn't say they should be kicked out i said they should just have continued the status quo you said they never should, you said yes that. they should be kicked out because they never should have been there that's what you said so I didn't if you, say, uh, they shouldn't be kicked out. They should not have been there. So what do you want to do about the gay people in the military currently? Just let them stay? What we had before. What don't ask, before don't tell? It was a pretty good policy. You, you don't, we don't talk about it. You don't ask, don't I don't tell. think exactly. you realize the contradiction here. You're saying if we kick out all the racists, we're going to have to put stuff on hold and we're going to have to dedicate military resources to shit that the military shouldn't have to focus on. But the don't ask, don't tell policy literally costs the military over $500 million on doing just that. Finding people that were gay. Oh, that was loud. Sorry. Finding people that were gay and then discharging them after they had already gone through costly training. You're advocating for the same thing right now that you're saying would happen if we kicked out racists. I don't think you even realize that you're making wait, a massive wait, wait. contradiction here. I don't understand where you, where did how did you jump from don't ask don't tell to kicking out racists like you're you're hopscotching you all over right the now? map here are you you're okay? hopscotching no, all you're not able to follow here. the conversation it's like you're not under you're not understanding the conversation i asked you why no, no, don't we no, just no, kick no, out racist people and you said because that would cost the military money and that would use up resources when that's not the military's goal but previously you said yeah, why not get rid of gay people? Or, I'm sorry, keep the don't ask, don't tell policy, which is what they had before. And I'm explaining to you that that, too, costs the military a fuck ton of money and ends up wasting military resources. So you can't say, so, no, we can't kick out the racists because that'll cost money while simultaneously advocating for policies that would cost the military money. For, I, I didn't say it would cost money. I said it would be a waste of military, not just financial resources, but time and energy spent trying to uh -huh. basically go through and investigate everything. Which is uh, the, the same money, with don't the, ask, the, the don't money tell. Going to the military, wait, hold, hold on, hold on. The money going to the military is, is, is completely not even a fact anymore. There's so much money going to the military. I can't even 
I, I can't even wrap my mind around it. So I'm not talking about the, the, the fiscal burden. I'm talking about the fact that you literally have to make our, our military less effective, basically say you can't carry out your functions, you can't carry out your duty, because we want to make sure that you're not posting racist memes on the Internet. We want to make sure that you're not posting a, um, a, a, a racist iconography, whatever it was. At the end of the day, it's a waste of time and energy, not necessarily money, because you want to distill this down to a fiscal argument. No, not necessarily it also money. Wastes time. It's it a also waste wastes of our time. military's time and energy. Yes. to Make sure that people on in the military are not uh, are not posting Pepe me and it wastes and are not, um, military and, and, and time are, and energy to make sure that people aren't gay and then discharging them if they are discovered to be gay. This costs money. Again, this costs time. This costs energy. This harms the military. You're advocating for one while simultaneously making the arguments for why we can't do the other, even though those arguments are applicable to the policy you're advocating for. Look, look, here, here, here's the deal. At the end of the day, because the discussion at hand is supposed to be how diversity and that's not just racial diversity, right? That's uh, that sexual orientation. The transgender thing is, I mean, that's like not even a question. And I think that any logical, rational person would tell you we can't have transgenders, we can't have drag queens and transsexuals in the military, in the greatest fighting force in the world, because of a number of reasons. I, I, forget people not being able to respect our military if we have these degenerate freaks running around trying to win wars. But, but, but the idea that the focus of the military should be diversity and that it makes it stronger— you could maybe argue that it's a wash, that it, that it has no effect, but the idea that it makes it stronger, the idea it that does. it makes our military more powerful and more effective is, as I said, retarded. Okay, well, you can keep saying that, but I mean, even according to the own Marine Corps, they compared an all-male group to oh, a mixed Marine gender group Corps, they've, in they've, a decision-making study. Themselves, they've proven themselves to be so apolitical. They've proven themselves to be oh, so Oh, I see. So now when I give you a source that directly comes from the military, you can't trust it because it was probably biased. Yes, you're so big brain. But what I was trying to say is there was a decision-making yeah, study. Yeah, hey, I excuse me. There was a decision-making study that was done oh from the Marine Corps teacher? and they ran. Did you shush me like yes, a I did. Woman? I did just shush you. They ran oh a study God. and they compared all male groups to mixed gender groups. You're like a library Had them teacher, solve. You're, you're like, you're Am like I going to have to mute teacher. you? Seriously, are you actually yeah, like, are you melting down right now? No, Please. I'm done. I'm done. Go. Thank go. you. Go ahead. So, they ran a study where they compared all male groups to mixed gender groups that had to solve challenging field problems. So this is specifically from the military, including women resulted in equal or better performance on cognitively challenging problems. Even military journals themselves have written about how diversity benefits innovation. And you admitted at the beginning of this stream that innovation is important for the military. So I'm happy to talk about trans people, but before we do that, I need a concession that innovation benefits the military and that diversity leads to more innovation. Innovation is fine, but diversity leading to innovation is something that comes out of a libertarian talking point from Silicon Valley and is not necessarily the only thing that leads to innovation. It yeah, I guess you can the cherry only pick thing. a few How I, come... I guess you can cherry pick a few studies, but the idea that diversity is like the leading factor for innovation is something that any think tank can put together numbers and come up with. Right. And, uh, they're and all it's not biased. I understand. I this is... No, you're not going to get you're not going to get that concession from me. First of all, secondly, the whole idea that innovation should be at the center of the military and, and not winning wars is Who ever uh, said that. It, it's fantasy. It's, it's pretty. It's like fantasy land. I think that it's no, like you're fantasy in fantasy land. land because you don't realize that only ten percent of the army will ever even see combat. There's a lot more that goes into so the military. What, so, so, so can you can you give me one example of like one of these fabulous innovations that is a direct result of having these? Uh, these I these, cited these you multiple studies groups. already. There are studies both you cited from me studies. I want an example. I want an example of either a the tactical study strategy an example. or a weapon. Or something that shows that because of like, because of diversity in the military, uh, this was the result. Does the study give us that concrete example, or does the study just say, uh, you know, they when asked that... about it, when, you know, when asked, do, do you feel more innovative? When asked, do you feel more comfortable? No, no, no. Do you, it's that asked, they actually like were more, more innovative. And innovate. They actually were like more what? innovative. What? So what? there's a reason, what? for example, why. Hey, what? calm down, what? please, buddy. Hey, hey do don't make me go what? full library on you again, okay? So. There's a reason why this is borne out in both private companies 
and even the Marine Corps themselves demonstrated how women helped them come up with more or help them solve cognitively challenging issues. Here's a direct result though for you. So by correlating diversity and leadership with market outcomes, we learned that companies with uh, various market levels of diversity mean out- anything. Yes, what it does. Because mean? the same way that diversity benefits private companies, the same way diversity benefits the military. This is why. Bro, you argue, so, you argue like a like a like a either a debate teacher or like a high school librarian. I want a specific example of something that came out of the military that, that very greatly benefited our military. That was the result of like some brilliant woman or some brilliant minority or some brilliant trend in the military. You can't name one. I'll give you that example once you can show an example of how diversity harms the military. How about that? So anyway, employees at these companies were 45% likelier to report that their firm's market share grew over the previous year and 70% likelier to report that the firm captured... Can I finish, a, can I finish, please? I'm trying to read something aside from your, your incoherent babbling here. Hold on, shh, be quiet. I'm going librarian on you again, I'm sorry. They correlated diversity with innovation and they found that they captured a larger market share which is indicative of the fact that when there is diversity in these companies, for example, in a large environment, all with a common goal, similar to the military, they are able to innovate faster and capture a larger market. This is companies that had more diversity. They out-innovated other firms. The reason that the innovation uh, benefits these private firms is the same reason why innovation benefits the military. And it's the same reason why so diversity show me does as well. That where, it, where it's working and happening in the military. I already t- explained to you how uh, the Marine no, Corps found know, that you, they were you, better you at solving jump, problems you, when you women were included. The, you jumped to the free market. You Wait, jumped to the free market. I already explained to you that the and Marine Corps themselves found that including women resulted in equal or better performance on field making decisions. In other words, innovative thinking. How is that a possibility? Because you just saw last week. They, they, they lowered the, the, the test, right? So basically, uh, women in the military, they basically said, uh, we're going to make our army stronger by weakening the standards. And they, they, no, they essentially said That's a lie. I'm move. really glad I looked into yes, this because no. you really they are lying really badly. No, 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 because I have to cut you off or else no, I'm going to be irresponsible by platforming right. misinformation. So actually what happened was there was a military test, like a physical test, and then it was updated yeah. for the first time in 40 years in 2019. And after that update took place, then it was not only unfairly excluding the abilities of women, it was also unfairly excluding older soldiers, National Guard soldiers, and Army Reserves. Correct. So they simply made well, slight well, changes for it correct. so that more people could uh, uh, basically take the test. And, try to get information and then said the exact same thing. No, I didn't. You're trying to say that they had a test and then all of a sudden they decided to change it for the women. What happened was they had a test and then they changed the test and then the changes of the test were resulting in unfair outcomes to an excessive amount, mind you. So they made slight changes to it. And also this was after they they made the changes so that women and old people could pass and National Guard soldiers and and Army Reserves under reduced reduced standards. And this was at the lowering the standards. But this was at the, this was after data was collected and was, this was data that was collected over the course of three years and from an independent report done by Congress. So you need to tell me actually why you think that you know better than Congress and the military and why you think that older soldiers, women, and troops from other fields should all be excluded. Why do I think I know better than Congress and the military? Because what has, what have they done to prove that they actually know what they're doing or talking about? (laughs) Wait, can you, can you please actually answer the question? Can you answer my question without a question? Why do you think that you know better than Congress and the military when it comes to uh, uh, these tests and these standards? Because I don't have to do gymnastics to come up with the, uh, with, with, with a rationalization for why reducing the physical standards of our military is actually beneficial you're, for the military. You're mixing it and up. It, the reason I keep bringing it up, the down. fact that it was updated is because women were passing those tests fine. And then the test was altered the first time in 40 years. And the alteration of the test was delivering ridiculously unfair outcomes to the point that if you were an older soldier, if you were a National Guard soldier, 
or if you were even in the army reserves, you were almost guaranteed to fail that test. That's not a proper, uh, that's not a proper no, viewing or assessment no of debate. skill. That's not that a proper assessment of skill. No, that's not a proper assessment of skill. Are you saying all National Guard soldiers and Army Reserves are not fit? Second of all, are there's you forgetting again the National fact Guard that there's there's also, I think you're forgetting the fact again, that only 10% of the military will ever see combat. Not everything in the military revolves around fighting and being strong. There's a lot that goes into strategizing, which is why I keep going back to the innovation point that you don't seem to be willing to talk about, or at least not willing to concede on. Dude, Obviously, I diversity. The innovation point ad nauseum. The problem is that you, I, I, I just ha wanted a simple question answered, which is just name me one concrete example of, of something innovative that was a direct result of diversity in the military. You can't seem to name one. Um, and, and then you I have told to you I would to, answer that to, question to, if you can explain how this harm, how diversity harms the military, and you haven't answered that one yet. Yeah, but that's that's convoluted thinking. I'm just asking for a simple answer, and you can't provide. A I'm a, I'm asking you for a simple answer, and you can't provide me an answer, man. Yeah, answering the question with the question. Okay. So, no, because so I'm not going to so, start so answering your dumb little one. questions when I've already established very very well and solidly that innovation benefits. Uh, from diversity and that by having more innovation in the military, this gives us an upper edge over our competitors. So by implementing diversity properly, that leads to more innovation, which leads to a stronger military, thus proving what I already said, which is that diversity is a strength of the military. Yeah, 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 you, you cut out, but it's, it's a strength. It's a strength of the military. We're, we're going around in circles on a point. And when it comes to racial diversity, uh, when it comes to gender, I, I think racial diversity is one thing. When it comes down to women in the military, I, you know, when it comes down to combat, I think that, that anyone with common sense can tell you why that presents its own problems. You don't really need a peer-reviewed study out of wherever the fuck to show that uh, women do not meet the same physical requirements as men. And yes, okay, granted, only 10% of the military actually sees physical combat, but actually delineating between the two, it doesn't really matter who's seeing combat and who's not, because you do have people who are in the barracks who are saying, hey, you know, this is becoming a problem because I have women you know, in, in, my, in, in my ranks who I don't feel comfortable around. A, I don't feel comfortable relying on them to save my life when I need them to. B, I don't feel comfortable comfortable sexually around them i don't feel like um that we can like do our job problem. when there's all of that that sounds like a uh, i don't problem. think it is there, i can't there, do my job because when... pretty woman is around you realize you're making men sound like fucking apes right now like this sound, that sounds fucking stupid i don't care if they're uncomfortable by a woman being around now i will grant you that of course Women are not, on average, as strong as men. Absolutely. But even if I were to grant you that, fine, when it comes to the combat element of the military, maybe women aren't as suited for that position. That doesn't mean that women don't benefit the military overall. That simply means that maybe you need the strongest of the strongest available when it comes to specifically combat roles, which is one of the smallest uh, proportion, excuse me, one of the smallest aspects of military action. So even, yeah, if I were to complete, the front line. so even if I were to completely grant you that, that doesn't mean that all women shouldn't be a part of the military. No, but the notion that it makes it stronger, and that's really where I'm taking issue, and that's really what struck me with your initial point, is talking about how women because and the military I isn't just about even, fighting. You I keep really forgetting that. that. Transgender. You keep forgetting no, that's that. that's its primary purpose. That's its primary purpose. No, Everything it's not. Is There's kind of way more that goes into the military, military than just fighting, dude. There's a lot of people that work on of military course. bases and innovate and strategize. Sir. Of course. But that's the majority of what the military does. But it all ends in fighting and combat. That's the ultimate goal. Everything is infrastructure in order to lead and that to that. Infrastructure that that's the can be benefited thing. and made stronger by innovation, which is directly correlated to more diversity. So diversity makes the military stronger. Is, I never said that having women can, in... You can't prove that I never said that your, fighting... Your whole argument rests on the whole innovation argument. And since you can't prove that innovation is actually benefited from diversity, you don't... I have proven that. You're just refusing to admit it because you think all studies that, are biased. Yeah, no, 
no, I refuse to admit it because you can't come up with one example. When I ask you for an example, you answer with a question. That tells me everything. Yeah, I because you're not giving me an example entire, back. So I don't know why I need to answer your question if you won't answer mine. It shouldn't, it, should, it shouldn't be dependent on whether I want to answer your question or not. If, you're, if your argument is so rock solid, you should be able – because you're, the entire crux of your argument rests on that. So you should be able to point to one example, and you can't every time I ask no, you to. No, it doesn't. You respond my entire question, crux does not actually rest on that at all. My entire crux of my argument is that diversity benefits innovation as a whole. And there are yes, also different correct. ways that innovation hey, – Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Your entire argument is that diversity benefits innovation. And when asked to show what kind of innovation diversity has led to, you can't show I anything. I listed you have multiple no studies That's that done. showed strong so correlations between diversity and innovation, yeah. buddy. Why are you ignoring that? There is. I cited you the Marine Corps study the that showed that they did better when women were a part of their group when it came to cognitive function. You can't show an I'm, example. I'm trying you to give you an example, example. I don't right know what, now. I don't, I don't know how you measure cognitive function. Uh, I'm trying to give you an example, example so, as I already have. There are already multiple different companies that have been studied that have been shown to benefit from diversity when it comes to innovation. This is literally you see, like- But you see what you're doing? Hold what up, am buddy. I doing? I just want to show you how flawed and stupid your argument is. Please. Where are you right now? Where, where, what, what sector are you in right now? You've floated away from the military, correct? You're now talking about companies. You're, you, now, you have to jump to private companies presumably in Silicon Valley or New York City or yes, San Francisco. Because wherever. there are more studies done in those fields in and they're directly show. applicable. Yes. You're the one being yes. stupid right now because you're not able to make this very simple near common sense connection. No, I simply want to know if you're going to make your entire case based on the fact that the military is benefited by diversity because of the fact that diversity leads to innovation. I want a concrete example of the kinds of innovation you're talking about. And whenever asked about that, you have to go to a study talking about companies and market shares mm -hmm. and what have you. Because that and demonstrates so how diversity often, benefits innovation. In, yeah. In the private sector, which is completely different. No, they have it's different not. goals. This is the problem. They have, they, they have different metrics. They're all a unit coming they, together they, to, they, for they, a they common goal. Success. And so it's that common goal that makes this comparable. So you're getting hung up on like, Give me a very specific example of the direct contribution that went. I mean, I know that women had a, a very Just large one. role when it come, came to one. World War II. And also, there are various different ways yeah, that innovation can occur. There's – so let me explain Hidden something figures, to you. right? Let me explain okay. something to you. There are different ways that innovation can occur. So the reason that you don't see like an exact example of like they had a woman and then the woman thought of this thing, therefore woman innovation – is because the most common form of innovation is a gradual innovation. Slowly but surely, our military innovates. And so there are multiple different pieces that connect there. That's why it's not as simple as just, here's a woman, and then an idea came up, lol. It's that over time, as you have more people participating in the military, that contributes to gradual innovation. So I think that that's part of the point that you're yeah, missing. And they, and they have measuring that kind of success or innovation it's all kind of this nebulous uh utopia oh how nice it would be if like it wouldn't it be nice if we put all these women in a room together and they came up but i guarantee you if there was one big technological innovation if there was one big groundbreaking thing that the military came up with you know that these very same studies that you're showing they can't actually prove anything concrete it's all very gradual you know that they would try to point direct success to the fact that they put more women, more minorities, more what have you right. in the military. Yep. You're coping. And right they now. would make this is what you're they, doing. You're coping. Make, and it's really sad. Hollywood I actually kind of feel bad for you. You know, if there's a God, I'll be praying for you because right now you're coping okay. so bad that there is so much data to indicate how diversity benefits innovation that you're saying, well, I bet even if you were able to prove it even more, that that would all be a lie. This is what people say when they don't have an argument and are instead re uh, resting on intuition and feelings. You're making a feeling-based argument. I'm making a factual one. And I think that that's why you want me to tell you like a bedtime story about innovation, when in reality, it's much more complicated than that. You want to talk about a bedtime story. You, these arguments are a bedtime story. I mean, the, these arguments, that you, the language that these, are, that, these, that these studies use are actually not any, in any form concrete at all. When you, when you talk about, oh, it's gradual. Oh, it's, it's, it's leading to... Uh, 
there's actually no measurable way to see how it's benefiting, but we just know it is. We just no, happen to. There uh, are not measurable to ways to, to uh, study how innovation In military, and diversity is benefiting. Sector. Why do you keep acting like the, uh, the military is like super special? If it applies to the private sector in a large firm, the results are applicable in the military as well. Second of all, when it comes why, to. The... Why, wait, 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 wait. Why do I keep on acting like the military is super special? Super special as opposed to these large firms with the uh, common goal. This is what the military has as well. I, I don't think you can compare the military to, to like, Facebook. Uh, okay. So, anyway, they're also, when I'm talking about the military innovation and whatnot, this is not coming from <laughs> yeah, me yeah. making this up. This is coming from literally okay. a small world uh, wars journal. So this is not coming from just, like, me making this up. This is literally, like, a military journal that explains the military innovation framework is what it's called. And one of the most common ones is gradual innovation. So there's disruptive innovation, there's gradual, and all of this contributes to the benefit of the military. And you know what? You want to know what this military journal said? They said, having multiple teams prevents groupthink and competition can be a powerful motivator, including people from diverse backgrounds to mix different perspectives and areas of expertise is critical to thinking about new ways to use existing things. The unencumbered minds are generally the most capable ones to deconstruct existing paradigms. Yeah, all of that's fine and dandy, except for it says including, first of all, I thought that language was interesting. It says including people from diverse backgrounds. That's not the driving force. And uh, when it can point to, to what something saying? that's... Common, sorry, go, sorry, you know, go maybe ahead. It, maybe I'll get it. I'm, I'm your phone is breaking up. I think your phone... I don't have the luxury of, of sitting there. Oh, I don't have the luxury of sitting there and being able to read. What, what is this from? Military uh, Small World military Journal. Time? Yeah, I'd be happy to send it to you if you're interested. <laughs> It's a, it's a really. military journal um, on how the, the innovation structure kind of works and takes place. I would love, you know what I'd love? I would love a, a think piece on some brilliant victory that we had in the military that was a result of all of this innovation. Because it seems very nebulous. It seems very uh, abstract. And it seems very nice. To be honest, I, would, I, would, I would love for it to be true. But um, when it comes to uh, winning wars and breaking things, I'm not exactly sure that I'm convinced by uh, by this uh, this think piece, which which sounds which sounds fascinating, and you're free to send it to me. Okay, um, yeah, but that's not the, the only thing that, thing that I cited. Me, but the other thing that struck me about that that made me think that you're a literal you, retard, okay. which uh, you haven't convinced me otherwise, is that somehow transgenders are included in this. So are we just moving it, off the I innovation that, right? point then? Are we just? Are we're we... going around in circles here. It's I know. I'm, for the I'm wondering if you want to, uh, if you're just ready to move off the innovation thing completely. Yeah. Okay. So when did I mention trans people in that clip? I don't even think I did. Did I mishear you? Um, you may what, have. What I just said diversity. On, what are your about transgenders in the military. Um, usually when the way I look at it is LGBT individuals entirely. So I look at it from like gay people and trans people, bisexual, lesbians. Uh, basically lgbt people as a whole and, and you uh, yeah and you don't think all of that sexual confusion and all i mean not to mention the 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 trans thing is specific because of all of the medical um magic that's required to make their fantasy a reality but when it comes to like the confusion and the and, and the idea that basically people who are that psychologically tormented and confused should be serving on the front lines or even, even Why contributing on the front lines? Part. Why do you keep saying that? It doesn't necessarily need to be on the front lines. There's a lot more to so it. Even contributing, even contributing in general uh, to, to, to the military, you don't think that causes a lot of problems that just should be removed no, from the military? it doesn't. So it, there's force. actually, I'm, and, gonna, and I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go back, back to, to your... the facts here. And this is, I know it's going to get scary, but there was actually a RAND research and development study that found that the readiness impact of transition related treatment would only lead to a loss of less than 0.0015% of total available labor years. As a point of comparison in the army alone, approximately 50,000 active component personnel were ineligible uh, to deploy in 2015 for various legal, medical, or administrative reasons. 
So no, trans people really don't have any kind of an issue on the readiness of the military. If you want to talk about cohesion, there's evidence from foreign militaries and the U.S. military, which has indicated there's really no significant impact on unit cohesion. Wait, what did you just read me? Read that one more time, because that literally was word salad if I've ever heard it. Evidence from foreign militaries has indicated... No, 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 before that. No, go back. There was a RAND study done which found that the readiness impact, like how ready you are to go, like work. Understand what readiness, okay. Okay, the impact of transition-related treatment would only lead to a loss of less than 0.0015% of total available labor years. As a point of comparison- Okay, put that in English. That literally is, that's the problem with these studies. And that's the problem with these. The problem is you can't understand them, and you're calling me that the retard didn't right say now. Anything? No, that didn't say anything. That didn't say anything. It showed that, that readiness was not, not impacted anything. negatively by transition-related treatment. That's what it shows. How do they measure that? There's literally no way to measure that. Why don't you look into it, buddy? Like you seem very critical of these studies, but like you're not even able to understand them. <laughs> Like, let yeah, the record show readiness, that you, no, 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 they're, let they're the record show that you called me a retard and now you're actually acting retarded. Just let the record show that. Because there's no way to show that their readiness, but, and by the way, when they talk about readiness, usually they're referring to combat or they're not, I, I assume they're not talking about their readiness to input something into a computer. So when they talk about readiness, uh, that's what they're talking about is com- combat. They're talking about and, readiness just with labor in general in the military. Yeah. So whatever job they might have when it comes down to labor because whatever job they might have there's not a significant reduction in their ability to do that thing because of transition related treatment right so basically it has no negative impact on their ability to do the job they're arguing against they're 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 attempting this study is attempting to combat the narrative that you know that soldiers who have transitioned uh are are are, there was a large argument out there that was saying you know the problem is that soldiers who have transitioned you know, when it, when the time comes, they're going to be like, oh, my darling, let me take my hormones. And uh, because they do need regular hormone treatments, they need follow ups to the sex change doctor. They need all of that. And so this argument just seems to be trying to combat the narrative that, no, they, they are prepared. They are ready. They're ready to take this on. It's almost and like by facts contradict feelings. No yeah, it's tough. It's tough when facts contradict and, the feelings. And, and to show that there's no connect, the, the, that there's no connection between the two. It just flies in the face of common sense. I don't need a study common to show sense. that someone, <laughs> yeah, that someone who is constantly needed needing hormones is not necessarily going to be ready. Someone who has transitioned okay. can't necessarily. Yeah. Well, with all say, due okay, respect, John, with all due respect, John, you're retarded, and I think that your ideas came straight from the John because this is the most delusional right. thing I've probably ever heard. How does I've it make you it. feel to know that How, you're far you more delusional than did, trans did people you, ever are? Did you think of does that, that make one you feel like sad a little bit? this, or did you write that one down? Uh, no, it's just, you know, insults come to me quickly when the person I'm talking to is like so incredibly brain dead. We don't appeal to common sense. If we did that, again, I'm gonna make a logical follow through to your argument. If we did nothing but appeal to common sense, we would all still be believing the world is flat. I don't care what might sound like I, I, common okay. sense, okay? What I care about Based. is what the research shows, which <laughs> is that there is not an impact on cohesion or the ability of trans people to do their jobs on the military when they transition. And that is what the studies have found. Yeah, you do know that the people who are conducting these studies and this research have very little experience in the, in, in the actual military. They tend to be academics. So you're making the cope argument again. Which is, there's not, data I'm that directly that contradicts my fifis, so they were probably just biased or wrong, or because they're academics, they can't be trusted. Uh, I think when you look at studies, of course you have to look at where the study's coming from. You can't just take a study and accept it at face value. I know. But you also have to look into it, and you can't also just listen to a study and then instantly say, well, it was probably biased because it contradicts what you feel. But I've actually looked saying. into the, you are saying that, and I've actually looked into these studies. So yeah, there's no real negative impact on the military when they include transgender individuals. And again, I'm going to go back to what I said before about cohesion and morale, which is really important in a unit. Morale is higher when people feel recognized and respected. If you have a transgender soldier, it benefits cohesion when they are able to communicate about that fact openly. That enhances trust, but no and that builds morale, and it benefits cohesion. No, 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 no person has the right to 
no person in their right mind is comfortable sitting in the same room as a transgender person. Uh, okay, so, well, I don't, again, I don't you're, you're literally, you no, 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 you're taking the fact that you're offended, you're an offended little bitch baby who's too scared to be in the uh, room with a trans person, and you're projecting that on all of society. Thankfully, a lot of us have more than two brain cells, and some of us aren't afraid to sit in the same room of, as a transgender person. Furthermore, I didn't say afraid, I said comfortable. You have to feel comfortable with your fellow, with your fellow, with your military. You can't just feel like, okay, I don't want to be around. Your your phone keeps be like in the showers with them. Your, and your the, phone I, cut I, out again. I'm sorry. I think your phone's okay. trying to prevent you from making this brain dead argument. The idea that you should, that people are comfortable around transgenders, uh, that's just that that that's not true. You ask a, any right regular person, hey, how do you feel? <laughs> Cutting out. I feel a transgender serving you food. They're going to be made uncomfortable by it. It's it's not something. I don't care what people say on on paper. I know enough people and it's not like I'm only in like far right wing circles to know that this is generally something that people aren't comfortable with. They certainly aren't comfortable with putting their lives in the hands of these people who don't even know if they want to keep their own lives. OK, when you talk about this the is really hilarious. Of these, of you're, these you're, people, well, I'd be more than happy yeah, to get into that conversation what, what, another what, time if we want to talk about the suicide rate. But again, the su hold on. Shh, be quiet. I'm going people, I'm going I'm going back to the library. Mode. Yeah. Themselves. And that's that. Suicide rate is because of societal discrimination largely from people like you. So what we've learned today is that you care more about cohesion in regards to sexual orientation and gender identity, so much so that you're willing to actually hurt the cohesion of the military, according to all available data. And because you're scared of trans people, you want to hurt the overall morale of the unit. There is even foreign precedent, again, that has shown that by repealing exclusionary policies, it had no effect on high performing personnel. It didn't negatively impact anything. So you, my friend, are actually actively arguing to make the military weaker because you're too much of a bitch yeah, I'm, and you're I'm scared to be around women and people I'm that are different to from you. The military weaker. I'm trying to make you the are. military weaker. Your, by, your arguments directly lead to it. Yeah. In the military. Yep. Because of the fact that exactly. when I say, well, they have a high suicide rate, I don't know if I'd necessarily feel comfortable fighting or, 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 or working with people trying to fight in order to win a war alongside people who don't know if they want to keep their own lives, who don't know if they're stable, who might be depressed, who are far more likely to abuse substances. Forgive me this if I don't feel This is because of societal reasons. This is, this is societal impact. Do you think that people are the like intrinsically more likely to, to do drugs because they're trans? This is ridiculous. This is because there's a high rate of trans people who are kicked out on the streets, so they're more likely to engage in dangerous behavior when you're homeless because your family disowned you because you're trans. That, that sounds, so again, that sounds like a them you're, problem. Okay, so you're contributing to the problem again, and I'm going to say it again because I don't know if it made it through your thick skull the first time. You are weakening the military with your talking points because you in are scared military. of women and you are. No, it doesn't matter if you're in the military. It's these arguments directly that create that binary that make people feel as though they're effective or ineffective based solely on all their all identity. You are doing that right to... now. You're weakening the military because order... you're scared. Yeah, you're. You keep cutting out. Can you talk closer to your phone? You keep cutting out. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, now I can, but you just keep going. Go ahead. I'm on the way. It's 90 degrees here, and so I'm on the way to the uh, to the beach to enjoy the weekend. Um, I'm not, I'm, getting, I'm not in the military. I have no I have no cap. I've oh my god. Too, but at the end of the day. My mentality is probably more representative of people who are actually in the military because what you're saying and you're acknowledging that you're conceding it by saying that we have to have all these training programs in order to basically this goes back to the first thing we we're talking about in order to force these people to be more accepting. No, in order it's to not about force forcing people. people. It's really about creating an environment better. where there's less a perceived threat of people that are yeah, different you know, from okay, them. That, See, I don't want people to become like you, who's really scared of anybody that's different from them. Instead, <laughs> we need to have create? stronger cohesion and good morale in our military. And this has all been demonstrated to be benefited from diversity. Second of all, I would be easy. It would be very easy for me to explain to you that there are even studies done where people in the military have been surveyed themselves and 23 
43% of respondents stated that they were certain they worked with a gay or lesbian indivi individual. And out of these, 64% reported no adverse consequences for their military unit's morale. And 66% stated that their personal morale was not affected in any way. So this is actually coming from people that are in the military and they're saying it's not negatively affecting anything. You have feelings, I have the facts, and this is why you're so desperate right now. There, I literally, so you went from talking about how I feel to saying that, okay, admittedly it is a problem, so therefore we basically have to create an environment. I think those were your exact words, is create an environment of inclusivity. And what I'm saying is it's not that easy because the last time they did that, and we're going to go back into a circle, the last time they tried to do that, uh, they basically had to put the military on hold. We so, are going to go back to that because if we applied your logic to any other situation, then we would certainly have not made the progress and have the benefits of the society that we have today, which is why I brought up the Jim Crow thing at the beginning you, of this conversation. Right. But you speak in such utopian language and none of it is actually concrete. None of it actually bears itself out. Mm -hmm. All of it is just I wish these, you could prove these, that. Fantasy, these fantasy talking points that, that, that basically, and it, and it comes down to a larger problem that we're seeing in society right now, which is that equality and inclusivity is the goal in of itself. And that is a higher good than anything else we're trying to accomplish, right? Because instead of looking at the objectives of the military and looking at the goals of the military, you're saying, we're willing to put all of that on hold. We're no, willing to put all of that on that place second hold. fiddle. So that we, we don't can, have to put it on hold. So that we, so that we can like, accomplish are you this forgetting utopian. That it's not utopian. Mm -hmm. I think that you're forgetting that the military trains people all the time. That's one of the things the military does. That's like saying, so you want to take the military's resources Wait, to train people on how to fight? Yeah, the military trains people. If there are certain initiatives to implement diversity in a healthy way, that is a good thing, again, because diversity benefits the overall innovation and yeah, thus you, strengthens the military. Trained, you can't be trained to be accepting or tolerant of something that flies in the face of everything that you've learned growing up. This is a lie. Which is, just, which is essential biology. You're not going to convince someone who's in, their, who's in their late teens or 20s that all of a sudden biology isn't real, that all of a sudden No one's uh, saying that. You just don't that, understand the issue. But why in the world are you are you saying that when I've already provided you with the study that showed that exposure actually leads to less uh, uh, discrimination? Probably because when you were reading the study, I wasn't listening. Well, that would make sense. Why none of your arguments seem to, uh, you know, because that's anything the... I said at all. That, that could definitely make yeah, sense. Cause... No, because every time you're like, oh, it's the peer reviewed study. My eyes just glaze over. I know, I've seen yeah. enough of these studies. It's funny because you're so scared of, of the facts. It's hilarious. I love watching no, it. Like, it's... Yeah, I, I just let it be known that, like, for a long, long time, you know, it was, hold on, hold on, hey. And I'm like, you know what, Can you? no, you hang on. I was like, I know this guy is going to, like, give me study after study after study, and at the end of the day, it really shouldn't come down to these studies, because every study can be manipulated, every study can be can be curated and made to say whatever you want it to say, yep. but at the end of the day, people this know what, what logic is. People know, that, people know that in their own personal lives, people know that they're in their own communities, and in their own uh, neighborhoods and everything that all of this stuff does not actually bear out. And so this you poo poo on lie. common sense and you say that and you <laughs> and you say that common sense has no role in argument and that logic has no role because I'm looking at these peer reviewed studies mm -hmm. and what I'm telling you is that your studies are shit. And what I'm telling you is that Yeah and you're that you're your coping again. It's to show you in the paper just does not I know that you're not really listening anymore any because I don't think you hold on no you've talked for long enough please I, I only have so many brain cells left for you to kill okay so it's funny because well, it was you people no no, no. Shh. it was you people on the right for the longest time who would use the phrase facts don't care about your feelings and call the left the left-leaning people the little snowflakes that was the whole thing for a long, long time. And now over here, suddenly feelings matter more than facts and you're coping because all the available research on this subject proves you wrong. And rather than being willing to admit that, hey, maybe I was wrong, maybe having some diversity in the military is a benefit and it's not a retarded take. Instead, you need to fall back and cope by saying every single study is somehow flawed. That's not. I didn't say every single study is somehow flawed. What you said, I said they don't bear out. They reliance, they mean nothing the in the face of yeah, common sense. That's what you said. On studies that when you basically dig into them, come down to floral language that actually is saying nothing. You realize that maybe these studies aren't actually representative of reality. 
when you realize that they're, they're coming out of Harvard, they're coming out of Dartmouth, they're coming out of Rand, they're coming out of AEI, they're coming out of Washington, D.C. Maybe they're not actually representative of what's happening on the ground. You talk to veterans, you talk to people who are actually fighting these wars, you actually talk to people who are intelligence in the military, mm -hmm. and they all sound exactly like me. And if those are the people oh, who are I'm actually sure. in the military, yeah. I don't really care what some four-eyed geek in some office says about the situation. You realize this Not isn't just like somebody writing that, something down on a paper, right? These are actual studies that are done and borne out empirically. Also, I already mentioned much, the yeah, Marine how, how Corps study people, as well. How, how, what, what, what does this Lyle guy, what do these people have? The Marine Corps study, does that guy actually have combat experience? So why does that matter? Are you joking Just right curious. Now? You know, you, I guess you know, that curious. sucks. That I, well, you, I you hope that... no. I hope that nobody ever brings up any study unless they have direct experience in that thing. You know, I wish that like people would stop citing studies about like crime rates, for example, unless they've committed crimes. You know, I don't think that they are, are reasonable to uh, assess any kind of crime statistics. Or Do you realize how fucking crime, dumb you not. sound? I just it's it's actually really satisfying when I talk to people like you because you call me retarded and then you get up here and I literally think you might unironically be mentally ill. You're certainly far more mentally ill than any trans person. Oh, good one. No, here's the thing. You would hope that someone who's considered the preeminent expert on this subject, like you would kind of just hope that they have some experience in what they're talking about and that they're not just sitting in an ivory tower and pontificating about this stuff, right? Because at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to experience, talk about, or know what you're talking about that's happening on the ground if you're, you're so far removed from it and just pouring through numbers. So I do reject this notion that these studies are the be-all, end-all of, uh, uh, of how we are to view the military when these people actually have no experience in what they're talking about and are, if right. anything, extremely far removed from it. It's not just the studies, though. Remember, I also cited the survey of military personnel themselves who said that it didn't have any negative effect on their military unit's morale by including gay they people? They said that they feel... You said you want to talk to the actual people that are on the ground. They spoke to people that are actually on the ground, and they found that including people didn't affect or didn't negatively affect their unit's morale. And I can show you a study that shows that they did. Really? And I've talked to far more people who have said that they did. Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't I've know we were basing this all on people who we know. Maybe I can get like a uh, transgender soldier on here, and then your entire argument would be blown up. Like that's – that's the delusion that you're operating on right now, dude. Why, 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 why don't you get Chelsea Bradley Man or whatever on your show? Talk about, uh, you know, how her and her deserters, uh, I think I have to say her because we're on YouTube, how her and her deserters, uh, you know, how they feel because you, what, what are they? they? They're likely to desert it. What is that number? 70% or something insane like that because they're trans. They're more likely to desert. They're more likely to do drugs. They're more likely to commit no, suicide. They're not more these likely are really to desert. strong. Actually, these you want to know really... something really interesting. Again, it's funny these you keep really complaining cool about the problem that you're there. creating. So we've already established how your dumb fuck talking points hurts the cohesion. But yeah, also when you actually contribute to discriminatory practices or discriminatory talking points, that actually makes it more likely that... Uh, uh, soldiers will desert. So, for example, we have literally we have studies showing that when people face inequality, they're seventy percent more likely to desert the battlefield. This harms morale. So, by accepting trans people into your military, especially trans people that are already fucking there, you benefit morale and you make it less likely that they would ever desert. Yeah, they are you, fighting you, for their country, just... and you're mad because you look, think they're buddy, different and look, weird. Buddy. You can't just sit there and say and snap your fingers and say accept and it's like magic. Like, if, 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 how do you how do you just say everyone you must accept transgenders when it's an aberration of nature? It should make people uncomfortable. It should make people feel weird Why because it's it's, it's just deviant behavior. Why are you appealing to nature right now? Biology, nature, science, whatever you want to call it. But it I, is, are you making like it because it's natural that means or because it's not natural that means it's bad? Because it's unnatural, it makes and it, you shouldn't feel that and your solution is to what your solution is to what my solution is to not be running on three brain cells basing shit off nature so if we again i'm gonna, hold on, gonna wait. i'm gonna actually my well no no no. i'm not done talking i'm about to i'm about to make this argument here for you so again i'm gonna have to make the logical follow-through of your claim if we were to do that then you would have to tell me that raping somebody is moral because it happens in nature. It's natural. But as humans, 
we recognize that that is wrong. Just if something exists in nature or doesn't exist in nature does not mean that it is immoral or wrong in human civilizations. You're making how dumb arguments go, again. How did you go to rape? How did you jump to rape? This is a complete perfect demonstration of how you are not listening to a word I'm saying. Everybody listening right now knows exactly the point I just made. And apparently you don't. Yeah, because something, you okay right that, something, that something occurs in nature <laughs> that, 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 it, that it's acceptable. Yeah, I mean, killing people occurs in nature too to, to take your argument to like the most ridiculous So degree. why are you basing killing shit on nature? You're, you're disproving your own point right now. I know. a natural order. And I'm not going to bore your audience right now with an argument about natural law. The natural <laughs> order, yes, exactly. But uh, I, I think it's fair enough to say that biological expressions of sex are not along the same lines as rape and murder. And it's the, uh, I know it's a, a reduction to absurd, but, you know, it's still a ridiculous point. When you, uh, all I was trying to establish is when you appeal to nature, you're not establishing that that thing for humans to do is actually immoral. Because there are lots of things that happen in nature that are Who immoral. Who is going to you're, so you're, you're telling me that that uh, transgenderism is is actually it's, it's not just it's not just immoral. It's actually the moral thing to do. I mean, that's demonic. Did I say dude. that? That's actually satanic. Oh, wow. Well, it's satanic, huh? Discrimination. Will yeah, you pray you're, for you're me, John? Will you ask Sky Daddy to, to I, help I me help the demons I come out of my night. soul, please? Like, I don't know I where do to take night. this conversation at this point. The entire time it's been. You coping that a fuck ton of studies prove you wrong, and then you trying to lie and say that if you talk to actual soldiers, they would tell you it's bad. Meanwhile, we have surveys of actual soldiers that say it's not bad. And then you say it doesn't matter in the okay, military, God. even though we have literal military journals saying that it, uh, innovation benefits from diversity. You're lost. You're a lost but little lamb right now. No, because you're... you're because your entire argument is built on a lie. Your entire argument, I'll go back to it, rests on the fact that innovation is benefited by diversity. When I ask you what kind of innovation can you show me that was a result of diversity, you, you, you go into spirals. No, you start I explained spiraling this five times and, now, and, and it just shows that you're not and listening. You end up in the private I literally no, I already explained this five times, buddy. After you started being a fucking idiot. But at, <laughs> you, so at the end of the day, basically. I'm the one who's yeah, retarded, no allegedly, point. even though you're actually talking like a mentally deranged person. We've established that yeah, diversity you, benefits you innovation and innovation is a crucial somebody. element to the military. And we've established that it doesn't actually harm morale. Instead, it's your type of an attitude that negatively impacts cohesion and morale. Do you have anything else to say? Do when, you want yeah, to? Let's go ahead and wrap this conversation up because I don't think I'm ready to, to lose any when more brain cells. You're able to show me the kind of innovation you go ahead and that a, diversity leads to. I already uh, did that with the various that. different well, businesses now. that tracked innovation. All right. Do you want to give a quick shout out to your channel? Yeah. Fuck you. What a fucking piece of shit. Oh my God. Here I thought I was literally like practicing so hard for this. I thought that this was going to be a much more challenging conversation. Oh, there's actually a Department of Defense article right here showing that diversity, equity, and inclusion are necessities in U.S. military. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified when I drop a new video.